tinctures or extracts. Tinctures generally refer to alcohol extracts, but technically a tincture is any herb made by placing fresh or dried herbs into a jar and covering them with a solvent. And the solvent is called a menstruum. And those menstruums are alcohol, glycerin, or vinegar. And then the mixture is then sealed and allowed to macerate or soak for two to six weeks. Um, alcohol is the most common menstruum. If you think, if you see the word menstruum and it makes you think of menstrual cycles, that's because the typical time that we allow things to soak is about a month or 28 days. Oh. Um, so that's um, where that word originally came from. So alcohol is the most common menstruum. It dissolves the most active constituents out of the plant matter. It acts as a preservative, retaining its effectiveness for years. Um, any part of the plant may be used, and it can be used dried or fresh. It can be made with vodka, 180 proof Everclear, or 100% cane or grain alcohol. If 100% alcohol is, is used, it's diluted 50% with, with water or distilled, distilled water. Now, I... Um, when I was starting to do this as a business, I started making everything with vodka, and then when I went to go to a business, I um, got really expensive organic cane alcohol for people who were um, uh, uh, eat have gluten stuff gluten free. But you know they're taking like less than a teaspoon of. Of, uh, of alcohol and I finally after I stopped doing that commercially I kind of gave up and now I'm I'm totally happy doing it with vodka I think vodka is perfectly fine for doing it for a home person um, uh, but you can you know if you're super organic and super gluten-free you can get the 100% cane alcohol um, if um, uh, glycerin is um, the menstruum that, that's super helpful for people who cannot do alcohol, for children, for babies. Some people are using it oh, quite a bit for pets because it makes you know because it's sweet. Pets will um, use it more, um, and it is. Um, uh, it's also good for people who are in recovery, or who are pipe carriers and don't um, uh, drink alcohol for whatever other reason. So um, glycerins can um, extract um, some oil-soluble uh, constituents that alcohol does not. And the one that we typically think about around here is the cannabis, because you um, the, the cannabis doesn't come out in the alcohol, the THC doesn't come out, is oil-soluble. So it'll come out more in a glycerin than it will um, uh, 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 alcohol tincture. So, um, oh, glycerin is a byproduct of oil, of making oils, and it's something that's done, I don't know, it's not easy to make glycerin on your own. I looked into it and it involves more chemistry and machines. Yeah, chemistry stuff. <laughs> um, so, um, vinegars are made in the same way other tinctures are, and there are some, uh, vinegars are great for uh, culinary stuff. That's where we make our fire ciders out of vinegar. You know, there's and you can make digestive vinegars. There's a lot of great things you can do with vinegars. So, vinegars are another really good one. Are those the three tincture, the three menstruum? Then? Yes, but, is okay. alcohol, glycerin, and vinegar. Okay. And then, um, how to make an alcohol tincture is you, you if you use dried herbs, you use. Um, now, I, I usually say this in the beginning, but I'll, I forgot, so I'll put it in here now. This is how I do stuff. It doesn't necessarily, and it's kind of the typical way that, th that things are done, but there's lots of different herbal product makers. There's lots of different herbalists that say different things, and that's fine. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. This is just, you know, the way that I do it. Um, one part dried herb, broken down finely but not powdered, to three parts alcohol for a one to four ratio. One to four is the typical thing that's done, but some people do a one to five ratio, particularly the commercial operations. Um, some people might even make it stronger if you were doing it for a particular reason um, for yourself. For fresh herbs, you want to have equal parts of alcohol. 
to um, uh, of herbs to alcohol. So uh, again, when you use a fresh herb, you're going to pretty much double the amount of of material that you're using. You put it in a gla glass jar. The alcohol should oops should um, uh, the alcohol should uh, um, totally cover the herbs and have it not too full. So you so it'll agitate properly when you shake it. And then you want to make sure it's covered tightly. Um, and then the other thing you want to keep in mind is this dried herbs will expand when the alcohol is added. So you want to leave a little headroom in your jar so it will expand a little bit. And um, you store it in a cool, dark place and shake it daily. Now, if you are in there and you're shaking your herbs every day, then you really can make a tincture in a month. But if you're like me and I don't always shake them every day or doesn't, you know, or sometimes it's just a couple of times a week when I, when my interns come, then I let mine go for six to eight weeks. So, you know, it does go faster if you do shake them every day. After, after your period of time, you strain it. I love using a French press. I mean, you can buy expensive tinctures, strainers, but I'm just a regular French press works great. Um, uh, and you discard your plant material and label it and use it in a tincture. You want to store it in at room temperature and away from direct sunlight. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to make a glycerin tincture. So using dried herbs, use equal parts dried herb, broke down finely but not powdered, to 50% glycerin and 50% hot water. Now some people say a third to two thirds. You know, there's some different things out there for um, for ratios for glycerins. Um, I tend to go a little bit heavier on the um, on the glycerin, um, the amount of glycerin on there, because uh, I like my glycerins to be uh, pretty strong. Um, again, you'll double your amount of fresh herbs, and then you place it in a glass jar. You put, and how I do it is as I. I create a double boiler in a crock pot. So I don't put stuff directly in a crock pot. What I'll do is, is um, put it in a jar. I don't have a picture, it's in the next one. Um, you put it, your jar in a crock pot with it, and I put a washcloth in the bottom of the crock pot so it doesn't burn it, and then fill the crock pot full of water. So you're just setting your jar inside of a crock pot and then um, letting, it, um, letting it heat up and then um, anywhere from 24 to uh, 48 hours, you can um, you can you can do them all. You cover them on tightly. You put it on your lowest setting. You know anywhere from from um, two three days. You um, it generally takes for most things. Roots tend to go a little bit um, lower. I tend to look at it and see how dark it's getting, and uh, or even taste it and see you know. You yeah, um, yeah, you do want to shake these too. Um, if they're um, on tightly, sometimes I turn them upside down. Um, so um, after your period of time, say it's three days, then you'll um, take it off and you'll strain it. Um, uh, you'll you, you'll strain it, discard the plant material, and label it and and use it. Now the thing about a glycerin tincture is it will not keep for the same amount of time as an alcohol tincture. That's, That's okay. why I tend to not yeah. use them very, very much at all. Um, you um, and I you store them in, a, in. They need to be kept cool, and I keep mine in a refrigerator. So I have like half of the outside refrigerator is all full of, of glycerin tinctures. <laughs> Glycerins um keep for six months to a year. So how to make an herbal vinegar. So using dried herbs, um, you will use one part dried herb, broke down finely but not powdered, to three parts vinegar. Um, so it's the same ratio as a tincture, one to four. Um, and then you double the amount with fresh herbs. I'm really into apple cider vinegar. I like the one with the mother because it has the probiotics, but you will get that bloom of um, uh, of stuff in there, but it is good. It's the good stuff. Um, you put it in a glass jar. You put the jar in a warm place, not hot, but you can put it like in a in a sunny window. But you want to, if you put it in a sunny window, you want to have it put it in a paper bag because you don't want the sun to actually go in it. So it should be dark and 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 warm. 
Um, and then you cover it, shake, uh, you cover it tightly and shake it uh, periodically. After two weeks, you can then you can strain it, discard your plant matter, mm. label it, and keep it um, in. Um, although I tend to let mine go a little bit longer. You know, I make a lot of different fire ciders, and um, it can be um, used as um, food or medicine. It's great for tonics. And what a tonic is, it's an herb that you take every day to build your immune system and keep healthy, as opposed to a medicinal thing that you would take if you were sick. You, you know, tonics are things that help help build up your system. Um, I'll, I'll go on a sidetrack here about uh, about tonics. So before people had um, trucks that brought them fresh food from warmer parts of the planet, um, <laughs> there was. Um, at the end of the late spring, people's immune systems were really low because they hadn't had any fresh food for all winter. And so um, what people would do is, is they would make uh, tonics and they would take fresh herbs like, like fresh, um, uh, fresh nettles and other kinds of, uh, of, uh, of herbs that are really good tonic, those tonic healing herbs and preserve them in vinegar for in the spring when there wasn't access to fresh vegetables then they would have these spring tonics you've heard these this term spring tonics yeah. well that's where that came from and a little sidetracked on there and then i think we, this is probably a good enough place for a break <laughs>